What is going on everybody and welcome back to Bourbon of the Week. My name is Chris. I'm going to be your host for today and today we have our first and only release from this year's Booker's release. They release four per season. I can't afford all four, so we go with one a year and I buy it for myself as my Christmas gift. Whatever's on the shelf at the time, whether it's 03 or 04 for that year. This year we have 202303, the Mighty Fine Batch. Let's find out if it's exactly that. The story behind this batch is pretty cool. I'll tell it to you while I try and open this up. I always have trouble with these. There we go. I'm not a big fan of wax, but this bottle right here is called the Mighty Fine Batch because that's what Booker No used to say when he approved of different things. Fred No, at the time when he picked his first bottle of Booker's, gave this to Booker and said, what do you think? And he tried it and said, that right there is a Mighty Fine Batch. Now I think that's a pretty cool story. It's definitely cool to see that he passed that along and said this is a mighty fine batch and then they put it as the batch name here. You can get that entire story and more with the batch history and the master distiller notes with the card that comes with this bottle. But everybody knows before we get started on all of that, time for the traditional sip. Cheers y'all. Damn good batch. First of all, I believe if I drop this on the correct day, this should be dropping on the 20th if I get it edited in time. That being said, we should be in the middle of five days of giveaways, so make sure you check out those videos to see how you can win some cool prizes for the whiskey lover in your life. This right here, coming out of Jim Beam, 75, 13, 12, when it comes to the mash bill, 126.6 proof. We always start with drinkability. How does this taste when it comes to the actual ethanol kick? Let's try it. Now I will say this, this is the fourth bottle of Booker's that I personally own. This is obviously the neck pour. This is 2023-03. I have 2020-01, I have 2021-03, and I have 2022-04. We're going to try them all next to each other during the bourbon bomb of the week and figure out which one we like the best blind. But for this at 126.6 proof, just like the other ones, they all drink under their proof. Let's try it one more time and give you a score. Now, I'm not going to sit here and tell you at 126.6 proof that there's no ethanol on this. That's just outlandish. There is an ethanol kick on this. The question is, how bad is it? We put it in an 8.0 if it drinks right at its proof, and I'm almost leaning like right above an 8 on this. I think it drinks right around that 120, 125 mark, so we'll probably go a little bit higher than an 8, but not too much. I don't want to drink too much of this during this review because we are about to compare this to three other bookers ranging between 122 proof and 120 almost 7 proof. So this right here, I'm going to say like right above an 8, like an 8.13 when it comes to drinkability on this. Nothing crazy, but at the same time, like most bookers, it does drink under its proof. I will say though, taste I think on this bottle is where it's really going to struggle a little bit, especially compared to the other bookers, which is why I love that I'm going to do this blind compared to the other three. Again, I just opened this. I think that has a lot to do with ethanol. I don't think it has a lot to do with flavor. The flavor on this seems a little bit quiet to me, especially at 100 and almost 27 proof. It seems like I'm searching for the flavors where I'm not used to that with bookers. You get a very creamy peanut butter note on this, which is very obvious when I talk about Jim Beam, but then you're getting vanillas, caramels, maybe a little bit of spice in the middle here, but nothing too crazy when it comes to the taste. At seven years, one month, 10 days on this, I wasn't really expecting a lot of oak, but I do get a lot of dry oak and tannins. I'm also searching for a little bit more sweetness on this. Again, the sweetness is there. It just feels like it's not enough. Like I want more of that sugary vanilla caramel notes on this. And then a little bit of rye spice in the middle. Seems simplistic for the bottle that we're talking about coming out of Booker's. There's nothing off-putting about this. I'm not going to tell you that this is a bad bottle of whiskey, but again, we're about to compare it to some other bookers and we'll get some better answers during the bourbon bomb of the week, but I'm going to give it like a 7.26 when it comes to taste. I think it's good. I don't think it's great. And especially at that price point, I'm expecting a little bit more coming out of Jim Beam. 7.26 is where we're going to put it. And last but not least, we're going to talk about price on this bottle. This bottle comes in at $99.99 here in Pennsylvania. We'll call it $100. Bucks. And the thing is, a couple of years ago, they jumped this from $75 to $100, and everybody kind of lost their mind. It was before a lot of these bigger companies were raising all of their prices, and they said a $25 increase is absolutely outlandish, which I understand at the time. It was like right before I got into the bourbon world. That being said, it seems like they wanted to make their money on the front end, and now they're kind of tailing off on the back end where they're not raising their prices on this at all. If they stay firm at $100, I think it's a pretty fair value in today's market. Now, this particular batch right here, I don't think lives up to $100, but at the end of the day, you're talking seven years, you're talking bookers, you get the beautiful box, you get the great story, and at 126.6 proof, it's not like they're cheaping out when it comes to the proof. Let's take one more sip, and we'll give you a score when it comes to price. 
Now I will say when it comes to price, we give it an 8.0 if it's average drinkability, average taste, and it's an average price of about $50. I think we're gonna have to raise that average price going into 2024, but for right now, let's stick with $50. It's a little below average when it comes to taste, a little above average when it comes to drinkability. We can average those two out and say they're average. How many times do you think I just said average in the past 30 seconds? We'll keep a counter. But then the price at double the price of, you guessed it, average. We're not gonna give this a great score when it comes to price. I think other batches are better than this, but again, we're about to find out here in a minute. Let's finish this off and we'll give it a score when it comes to price. For me personally, it's not my favorite batch. I wouldn't grab another bottle of this. I wouldn't get a backup of this particular batch right here. I'm going to say like a 6.94 when it comes to price on this. Again, $100 is definitely something that's up there pushing the premium market. These days, there are a lot of bottles under that price point that I think are better than this. So 6.94 is where we're going to put this when it comes to price. But listen, while I have these scores up, let's send it over to this week's Bourbon Bomb of the Week, blind these, and see if I'm right or wrong about the taste on this compared to the other three. Let's get it. So here's the deal, and this is how we're gonna do this. We have A, B, C, and then no tag over here. We have A, B, C, and then this C, you can't see it from the top, no pun intended, but it is a little dirty on the bottom of this C. There's a marking on the bottom of this C, which lets me know that that's the second C, which will be our new batch from 2023. So what we will do is we will spin this up, we will blind these, and we will not know which one is which. We will see which one we like best, strictly on taste. All right, I'm going to be honest, I have no clue which one's which. So here we go. They're all mixed up. Everybody knows. Time for the traditional sip. Cheers, y'all. See, that one off the bat already seems better than the one that I was just drinking. We're going to go through these a couple of times, try them out, and then I'll let you know my thoughts. That one is hot but delicious. What are the proofs on all of these again? So A is 126.4 proof. B is 125.5 proof, C is 122.4 proof, and then this is the one that we are drinking today, 126.6. So these are our two highest proofs. That's got to be one of those, but the flavor tells me it's probably A. Definitely has a kick behind it, but the sweets and the rise on that are very good. Let's get into glass number three. Now, I don't know if it's coming off of this glass right here, but this glass, ethanol kick-wise, for any of these is phenomenal. There's like no ethanol in this at all. And last but not least, number four for the first time through. Is it bad that I can already tell that's definitely the one we're drinking right now? This has got to be the last one. This has got to be the one that I'm drinking today. There's just no flavor on that compared to these other three. Like, it's not even close. I'm going to be crazy upset if I'm wrong, but I just can't imagine I am. I didn't think comparing the four of these, they would be that different, but there is definitely a substantial difference between these four glasses. This one right here, it's like your average Joe. Everything about this is screaming average. Average drinkability, average flavor profile, nothing off-putting. You're going to enjoy this glass right here. This glass, the, I, if I had this glass blind, I'd be like, that's a very good glass of whiskey. This second one, though, flavor-wise, stands out phenomenally over everything else. Yeah, for me, this seems pretty easy. It's kind of a toss-up between these two. I'm going to say this is number four for sure. These two are ahead somewhere, and then this is going to be number three. I'm going to drink these last two one more time and give you a winner. It's kind of tough because like, do you pick the one that has a little bit more ethanol, but the flavor profile is substantially better? Or do you pick the one that has a very good flavor profile still, but the ethanol kick is non-existent? At these proofs, it's kind of a tough call. Here's what I'm going to say. I'm going to give the nod to this one right here, pending the actual results, because if this is 122 proof and this is 126 proof, we do have a conversation to be had. This one right here, nothing wrong with this glass, a great glass of whiskey, still a great bookers if you ask me. This one though definitely falls behind the rest of them. The question is, which one is which? I mean, we got to find out what's in last first. Cheers, y'all. Salute. There's a lot more than I thought there was. This one, I assume this is the one we were drinking tonight. Let's find out. And the answer is, it is. This is the Dirty Sea, which means this is the one we're drinking tonight. 
Not a great bottle of Booker's. Not a great bottle of whiskey, if you ask me. Again, at $100 compared to the other Booker's, and now I just did it for you, this does not compare to the other three glasses that I just drank. Let's find out what number three was. That's a really good damn bottle of whiskey. And it is the other C, which means it is our 202204, which is, what is this, Pinky's Batch? Yeah, this is a pretty good bottle of whiskey. 122 proof, which makes me feel better that one of these wasn't the 122 proof, but still a very good batch of whiskey right here. I would recommend trying it out if you have an opportunity. And drum roll, please. Let's go with our number one, and then we'll find out our number two. I honestly don't know. Now that the 122 proof is out, what do we have left? 125.5 and 126.4. Either way, this right here at 125 or 126 proof is wild. So we do have a conversation to be had, but this is A. The winner was A, which is 2020-01. This is Granny's batch. I did love this batch when I first had it. Obviously, it's the oldest one, but it's also the one with the most gone. This right here is a... Actually, they're pretty damn close. Obviously, both good bottles of whiskey, which means... That right there is B. That was a lot of whiskey to drink in a very short period of time. Hopefully I don't mess up this editing, but that's where we're gonna leave you. One, two, three, four. Somehow these ended up in order. Moral of the story is this. Every week there's a new bottle of whiskey. Every week there's a new limited edition. Every week there's a new batch that you have to try and you just can't try them all. FOMO is real. I understand that more than anybody. I try and get my hands on everything that I can get my hands on. That being said, this bottle of whiskey cost me $100 and I can't get that money back. And I didn't love this bottle of whiskey. It'll sit on the shelf for a little while. I'll let other people try it. I'll try and send out samples so that other people can try it before they buy it because that's what we do here at Bourbon of the Week. This bottle comes in at a 7.44. Honestly, I think it's a little bit higher than it deserves to be. But listen, that's going to be it for tonight. Make sure you check me out on Instagram at Bourbon of the Week. Click that like and subscribe button here on YouTube. And we do have a Patreon hangout tonight. So if you're watching this on the 20th before 8.15 and you join the Patreon, whether it's a $3 Patreon or a $25 Patreon, you can come hang out with us tonight and chit chat, drink some whiskey. It's a great time. Check out the Discord, that link in the description below as well. Please don't drink and drive. Always drink responsibly. Stay healthy, stay happy, and have a Merry Christmas, y'all. Cheers.